All right, finishing up with module 12, we're going to talk about hypothesis tests when sigma is unknown. This would be a t-test. So if you take a look at the PowerPoints, there's a lot in here, but what I want to do is jump to the examples. Okay. Um, so keep in mind that the test statistic for t is used when the standard deviation is not known. So we are forced to estimate the standard deviation with the sample standard deviation that we have. And this is the most realistic example here because in the real world we don't know sigma. So remember that the, the types of tests once again are left-tailed, right-tailed, and two-tailed test. This hasn't changed. This is the same. All of these um, things that we talked about before, basically the same. All right, so I want to go to the examples here. All right, a manufacturer is responsible for making the barrels to store crude oil for the U.S., which federal requirements state must hold 42 gallons. As part of a routine quality check, you randomly select 27 gallons off the assembly line and find that their mean capacity actually that should not say gallons that should say 27 barrels <laughs> 27 barrels and find that their mean capacity is 41.7 gallons with a standard deviation of 8 tenths of a gallon can you as a quality control administrator say with 99 percent confidence that requirements are being met Assume that the population's distribution is equal, approximately normal here. So 99% confidence, of course, means that alpha is 0 0.01, where x bar is equal to 41.7, s is equal to 0 0.8, n is equal to 27, and the, the null and alternative hypothesis looks like we have a two-tailed test here as well. Okay, so remember that the p-value is um, calculated by doubling, but uh, it, the calculator will give us the p-value that is the correct one. All right, so we will use the t-test here with the statistics that the 42 is the comparison mean x bar is 41.7, s is 0 0.8, n is 27, <coughs> and that we are doing a two-tailed test here. So it looks like the <coughs> test statistic is negative 1.94856 or whatever, and the p-value is 0 0.0622. 0 0.0622 for the p-value, not good enough. So that would be greater than alpha, which is 0 0.01. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis here. Fail to reject the null. So based on the sample, the manufacturer can be 99% confident that the barrels fall within the standards because remember that the quality control person was saying that the standards might not be met, right? So remember that the standard was the null hypothesis. We wanted to make sure that the, the you know, we were double checking to make sure that they held enough. So even though that the mean was 41.7, that was close enough to the, the goal of 42 so that it, we, d we failed to reject it. All right. Let's look at the next one. Okay, Sarah, who's a university junior, chose to live on the honors floor of her dorm because she was told that the girls on her floor, that floor, would be quiet and studious. In fact, Sarah was told the students on the honors floor study at at least 11 hours per week. After living on the honors floor for a few months, she's convinced that the students around her studies less than 11 hours, so that's the alternative that she is creating. And the null hypothesis is that it's at least 11 hours. To 
test the claim, she pulls 10 girls on the floor and her claim, given the results. And we're going to test the claim where alpha is 0.10. And she pulls 10 girls and we're going to test her claim here. And here is the data that she got by pulling the 10 women. So we'll have to put that into the list editor. So we could use L1. We type in the 12 and the 4 and the 14 and the 9 and the 8 and the 6 and the 10 and the 12 and the 11 and the 9. Those are the number of hours that each of the girls that she pulled said that they studied. Whether they were lying or not is another issue, right? So we can do a t-test here because we don't know the population standard deviation. We're going to type in the data that we just did by using L1. And the comparison mean is not 42 anymore. Now it's 11. The list is from L1. Frequency is 1. And I believe that we are looking, she's testing it the less than, which is the left tail test. P-value of 7.36% or 0 0.0736, which normally is not enough. But remember, we're comparing it with 10%. So this is less than 10%. So we would reject the null hypothesis which was there earlier, um, but the null hypothesis said that the mean was at least 11 hours per week, and her claim was that the mean was less than 11 hours. So it looks like we, looks like Sarah's right, based on the 10 people that she polled. It appears that there is enough evidence to suggest that the girls indeed study less than 11 hours per week. They study less than 11 hours per week. I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to skip that one as well. A lot of examples here. Nurses in a large te in large teaching hospitals complain for many years that they are overworked and understaffed. The consensus among the nursing staff is that they average at least eight patients per nurse each shift. They average at least eight. So that's the status quo. That's the null. The alternative would be that it's less than eight. In order to prove their point, the administrators gather information from 19 nurses. Oh, the, the hospital administrators claim that the average is lower than 8. In order to prove their point, they gather information from 19 nurses. The sample of mean is 7.5 with a standard deviation of 1.1. To test the administrators claim with a 0 0.025, which is pretty stringent, and assume that the average number of patients follows a normal distribution. All right, so the sample mean is 7.5. Standard deviation is 1.1, and n is 19. So we can say stats, tests, z, t test. This time we're inputting statistics. So the comparison mean is 8. 8 patients per nurse each shift. X bar is 7.5. Standard deviation is 1.1, n is 19, and they are claiming that it's less than 8 per shift, so that would be a left tail test. 0 0.010315 or 0 0.032. which is greater than alpha, which is 0 0.025. So it looks like we're going to fail to reject ho, 
which means that the status quo is unchallenged, which means the nurses are not necessarily wrong, and the administrators, based on the sample taken, they are, are wrong. We fail to reject the null hypothesis, so the evidence is insufficient to reject the nurse's claim in favor of the administrators. Okay? Yay, nurses! <laughs> anyway, so hopefully these examples give you enough practice on this type of thing. And if you need more practice, we've got lots of practice problems for you.